Hi, everyone. I'm Joel Baird, the general manager of Missoula Community Access Television. Welcome to this first season edition of Missoula Live. The show is typically hosted by Kim Anderson. My co-host is doing some work for Humanities Montana. She's out of town. She'll be back with me on October 10th. So I hope you all had a good summer. I certainly did. Uh, I got back to work. Very excited to uh, put together this is the fifth year we're doing this, and it's the Do It in 72 Film Festival. It's a contest, I mean to say, that uh, we're offering $500 cash prize to the, um, the top prize winner, $300 for the, uh, the second uh, place, and then a $100 honorable mention. This festival, I mean, contest is interesting because you have to do the film in 72 hours. Um, Scott was showing you the website, and on the website, you'll see this wrap. You come here to MCAT at 500 North Higgins on Friday, September the 30th, and we say to you, this is great. You're going to make a four-minute movie over the next 72 hours, and it has to have this in it, that in it, and this other thing in it. That's to make it fun, to make sure that all of the participants didn't start their movie early. However, you can uh, get performers for your movie. You can write the script. You can scout out locations. You can get music together. We don't want you to use copyrighted music. So you can get original music together for your production. And then you can come down here, hear what you got to put in it, and then have until Monday, October the 3rd at 5, to get the whole film to us. How do you do that? Well, you can send us a link to your Vimeo or your YouTube. You can give us a thumb drive with the final product on it or a DVD with the final product on it. We will, at that time, release some information about what MCAT equipment we have for you to borrow and what MCAT editing assistance we could offer on Monday, maybe Sunday. We'll just see what happens. So that's the instinct. You want more information, go to MCAT.org. Similarly, we have started again our Saturday afternoon animation drop-in. The animation drop-in is 10 bucks and it goes from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. and suitable for kids 9 to 13. In stop animation, the kids are using a lot of Lego sets, but they're also using um, drawing and dry erase and other techniques. So if you are interested in that, um, just bring your kid here. It's a drop-in, 1 p.m., 5 p.m. every Saturday at MCAT, and the fee for the four hours is $10. Anyway, starting right off, with this edition of Missoula Live, I have Tom Benson here, and he's going to talk to us about changes at his venerable organization <laughs> <laughs> that has a new name. Congratulations. That's right. Thank you. Everyone would know it as the Missoula, Missoula Cultural Council. That's right. And it is time to know it anew. It, it's, the new name is Arts Missoula. Okay. It's been, uh, we've been going through a strategic planning process over the last few years, and um, that's, it kind of came up that, that uh, it's been, uh, we do a lot of different things, and, but people have a hard time uh, aligning with the organization. They, they can align with some of our events, like we, First Night Missoula, First Fridays, our sister city partnerships, German Fest. Um, but what we do is we try to connect arts and culture and the community through through three major things uh, education advocacy and celebration and it's all about art and it's all about art in Missoula so right. we thought arts Missoula kind of says more of who we are and what we do oh, and gotcha. it makes us a little more current um, and, it, and it makes sense most people have, have commented on the name change that yeah that makes sense right and at the same time we have expanded um, our scope uh, we used to just a couple of years ago there was an office of two and now there's an office of four yeah uh, that's double <laughs> so <laughs> it's double and we're we're taking on a lot more projects uh, most uh, recently uh, we're now the administrator for the city's public art program oh that's great. so uh, the, the public art committee at the city of Missoula has been in have been around for 20 plus years yeah, but right. they've never had any administrative help so we're, we're offering them administrative help we're also um, the uh, fiscal sponsor fiscal agent for spark the uh, Kennedy Center initiative oh, yeah. with the public schools um, there was a nice article in today's paper about spark and our new director Jacqueline snow yeah. um, so we are we're sort of the home of spark uh, and that's a, a great collaboration of, of the University and Missoula County Public Schools and artists and organizations throughout Missoula um, and we're also sponsoring other events uh, um, such as the um, 
Mon uh, the Montana Book Festival is happening this week. Yeah. Uh, we're the fiscal sponsor for that as well. And we're going to hear more uh, about that next from John, who's in that's right. the, the bullpen. Right. And uh, so we're taking on a lot. We're, we're, we're expanding our scope, and um, it, it seemed right for a, for a good name change. Oh, that's I gotcha. Right. Yeah. And that process, I'm curious about it even personally because, you know, we're going to undergo a similar process at mm -hmm. MCAT, right? People, and just as we were discussing before we started, appointment television seems like it's becoming more and more old fashioned where somebody mm -hmm. is identifying with television as a way of getting information. Mm -hmm. Well, here we are, Missoula Community Access. Television. Yeah. Did you guys think, did anyone in the room say, oh, how can we throw out, are we throwing out 20 years of recognition with a name change? Yeah, that was, that was the first sort of process, the first part of the process is that, that you, you work with a, uh, we worked with a consultant and, yeah. and, and you, you, you get a professional in the room, somebody from the outside who can kind of has an outside perspective and, and that's what they say is, is, do you want to change your name? Is, yeah, there yeah. A, is there a need? And so you sort of go through this standard sort of s strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and, right, you right, know, right. threats, you know, the SWOT analysis. And uh, you know, if it's in, in most situations, you'll, you'll come up with the answers if you do that. You yeah, need to yeah. come up with the answers and say, no, we don't need to change anything. We're, but we're in good. this instance, you guys felt like yeah. we need that. That's yeah. going to be really useful to right. us. Right, right. Yeah, and I, and I think it has been. And I, th and I think it, it does reflect more of, of what we do and who we are, yeah. frankly. Yeah. So now, if people want to find out more, and I think I put this website up for Scott to show people after There it home. is. That looks really cool. Arts I like the website. Artsmissoula.org. Yeah. Uh, in fact, if you go to missoulacultural.org, it'll be redirected over yeah, there. Yeah, that's, what, that's but, how I found this, you see, because I couldn't remember. Right, and there's right German Fest, and... and uh, um, and then, yep, and then that, that one is Spark, is sort of the rolling uh, um, uh, yeah, photographs. Yeah, Spark I want to hear uh, more about as it unfolds. You know, I was at a meeting today at the MCTAC that mm -hmm. um, it's like a city uh, MCAT meeting, mm -hmm. and Hatton Littman of MCPS was there. Right. She was right. saying a lot of great lineup is coming through. Spark, oh, it is! It is this, um, academic, and term. it is a gr and it is it's truly a, a collaboration um, of a lot of a lot of different entities that ought to be working together. You know, the the our art the our arts community, the collection of nonprofit arts organizations, and the artists themselves, Missoula County Public Schools. Um, and the University of Montana is a good training ground because the, the, the Creative Pulse program at, um, at the University of Montana is, is training people in arts integration, which is what Spark's all about, it, integrating arts into the mainstream subjects um, in school. And as I said, this is part of the Kennedy Center initiative. We were chosen from, by the Kennedy yeah, Center great. as one of uh, now 20 cities. It's all part of the, the, uh, you know, the No Child Left Behind Act was yeah. replaced by Every Child Succeeds. And part of that is, in, in, in using the education jargon, is moving from STEM to STEAM. And <laughs> cool. so you got the arts in there, the A, the arts. Yeah. So, uh, so nationally, people are recognizing the importance of arts integration into the classroom, the importance of um, art for art's sake and, and arts enhancement, getting people out of the classroom, going to the symphony and, and going to the art museum and, and, and going to the children's theater. And they're already starting to do this already at the beginning of the school year. Yeah, um, Missoula's a great place for because right. you know there's a lot of arts in the right. town, and you know over at the Zoo Town Arts right now, there's this uh, monster project. Yeah, monster you've seen it. That is that's a, that's another Spark project, and that's that that is a great way of you know kindergartners become artists, and 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 professional artists and adult artists will will work on the kindergartners' work. Uh, yeah. uh, for for that, it, so it 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 covers a wide range, and it's really great to be a part of it. Yeah. Well, thanks, Tom, for coming yeah. by. Well, thank you. Congratulations on the name change. I mean, that okay. seems like a brave thing. That's right. Arts we Missoula, all are remember that. considering here at MCAT, <laughs> too. Is that so right? My hat is well, off to you. Good. Well, thank you so much. No, I, we'll be right back, you guys. Um, John Rimland is here. He's going to talk about the Montana Book Festival. He's got so many things going on. We'll probably just talk about the website a little bit. And Scott, I'm sure, has a very dynamic PSA, which we'll watch as we change out guests. And then we'll be right back.
boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Birthdays come and go, each year adding up to a lifetime full of extraordinary moments. At Missoula Aging Services, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults. We are ready to help connect seniors to the help they need. Knowing you've got friends to support you, each birthday can be special. See how we can help. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. Do you want to answer that? Uh, nah, I I'd never with a kid in the car. It's okay. I'm not here. I'm there. In 1969, Montana declared the swift fox to be extinct within the state's borders. Get out of because the way. Oh yeah, that's fine. And we're back with John Rimley. He's here to talk about the Montana Book Festival. Welcome. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you know it. So this book festival was looked after by our own co-host Kim Anderson for like right. 15 years, right? Yes. For Humanities yeah. Montana. How is it going on now? Well, Humanities Montana as you mentioned, ran it for 15 years. Uh, last year, they decided they had other priorities and sort of uh, felt that they had fostered it long enough and, and sort of like that teenager that you need to <laughs> kick out the door. <laughs> kick out the door. Um, they, you know, let it loose in the world and a group of us here in Missoula uh, decided that this was something that we definitely wanted to see continue and we're able to get some, some grant funding and uh, some donations and had our first uh, Montana Book Fest last year. It was a great success. Um, with great life. success, a wider array of venues than had been used previously. Um, we had, had events at the, uh, at the Missoula Public Library, uh, at the Art Museum, um, prior to that, the focus was primarily at the Holiday Inn, and now yeah. it's sort of much, uh, much more around the community. Uh, this year, there'll be events at the Wilma, um, at Radius Gallery, at I think Dana Gallery, uh, Missoula Art Museum, and of course the the uh, Missoula Public Library, as well as the Saturday uh, Book Festival, uh, Book Fair at the at. Uh, the Holiday Inn. Yeah. This is so huge. I'm really impressed that you guys could pick it up and then come at it with even more diversity and more um, places yeah, this for year people there, to take in the readings. There are sort of three separate tracks if you look in the uh, in the bulletin there yeah. or in the program. There's the youth, uh, youth programming um, that runs um, uh, begins Thursday and runs Friday and Saturday, and those are largely out at the at the Missoula Public Library. Um, and then there are a number of workshops that are being held also in conjunction with the book festival. Um, and they, um, some of those are, they're sort of all over actually. Some of them are at the university, some of them are at the Holiday Inn. Um, and, uh, and do the workshops, um, tailor themselves to the people that are writers, that are thinking about writing, and they exactly. feel like they're very new to the craft yep. and they want to learn more. Yep, and and those are all separately uh, ticketed events. You need to go online and register to, to get those. Um, and they really run the gamut from, um, we have a woman coming from New York who's uh, doing a, a program called Women Who Pitch, which is a workshop uh, on how to pitch a, a project. Um, one of her comments is that uh, women are really underrepresented in opinion pieces across the country yeah. and uh, you know that ought to be changed. Um, and then there's another one on pop-up bookmaking um, 
which is kind of a, a neat idea. Um, and then the, the main uh, festival events um, kick off actually on Tuesday um, with Tell Us Something, which is a uh, oh, you're, you're, yeah, you're familiar wonderful. with, I'm sure. And Tell Us Something's an absolutely wonderful event that uh, is going to be in the Wilma on Tuesday night. It's separately ticketed. Starts at 7 p.m. Uh, you can get tickets at the at the Top Hat or Rock and Rudy's or online. And this year's uh, topic for uh, that evening is Fork in the Road, yeah, I which uh, I think holds a lot of promise for some good stories. Um, and then for people who don't know that are watching at home, tell us something has been a, 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 a really fun happening in town for, I don't know, three or four years, right? Yeah, he's been doing a wonderful job with it. Uh, yeah. they, it was part of the book festival last year. Um, filled the the Denison Theater. Um, yeah, and it's live storytelling where people are invited to come without a script, right? I think that's one of the rules. They, they don't have a script and they have six to eight minutes or something like yep. this. Yeah, I think no story. more than like ten minutes. Yeah. Um, and uh, I've seen a lot of them because we've recorded a lot of them, and they're really they're, fun, right? Yeah, they uh, KOFM had a, aired a couple last uh, last night, as a matter of fact, oh, yeah. and and I sat in the car and listened to one of them and. Uh, you know, brought a tear to my eye by the time he finished uh, finished telling his story. It was really good. It can be everything, you know, really heart-wrenching, really funny stories. And yep. they are told often, too, by people that they're not professional storytellers. They're good. They're the kind of people at the party that, you know, are good at telling the story. Right. But you meet so many people through yeah. Tell Us Something. I think it's a wonderful um, thing. This year, one thing that we're doing a little bit different, trying, is um, we we didn't... We weren't as successful getting uh, grant funding this year as we were last year, so we're struggling with new methods of making this all work. So this year, a number of the events um, are going to be, we're sort of stealing a page from first night. I was going to say, uh, when I saw the button you, thing, you I thought, have well, a button Tom will and have something to yeah, say about here's, that. Here's what the button looks like. Okay. Um, and, it has treasure on it. That's and, cool. And they're for sale for uh, $15, and they entitle the holder to um, full Friday and Saturday festival access, which includes the author reception, the keynote reading, and the literary death march, which is a new uh, feature yeah, this year I that's going to that. be at the Wilma, um, and the uh, festival gala. But they also, the really neat thing is we've managed to f have partners with a number of local merchants, uh, Betty's Divine, Bitterroot Flower Shop, Cafe Dolce, The Depot, The Dram Shop, Fact and Fiction, Imagination Brewing, Le Petit Autre, Liquid Planet, Missoula Wine Merchants, Montgomery Distillery, Sweet Peaks, Shakespeare and Company, Thomas Marbar, and Zoo Town Brew. All, right. all are giving discounts during the week oh. with your button yeah. of like 20 percent or oh, that's great. That's a couple bucks off like so bike, walk, you know you you can get your money back really <laughs> yeah. easily um, on the button oh, and at the terrific. same time support the the book festival. Yeah and I understand I mean you can't make the this entire thing for free. Yeah you it's, it's it. tough it's tough. Yeah. Um, we we have a lot of tremendous partners that have helped out the, the Wilma of course is is uh, sponsoring or it has it has the venue for um, not only tell us something which is separately ticketed but uh, the readings uh, Friday and Saturday night, um, and then the Literary Death March, uh, I think, is there as well. Um, and then there's a uh, there's an event at the at the Top Hat, I think. Um, the um, the other event that is was last year was the first one, and it was a standing room only, sold out crowd. Oh. Um, and it continues a fine tradition of Missoula literature, Montana literature, and drinking, which oh, is yeah. pie and whiskey, <laughs> um, which is it. Oh, I heard about at, it. Yeah, yeah pie, and, pie and whiskey will be at, uh, at the um, uh, Union Club at 9 p.m. on Thursday. And it's separately ticketed, and I recommend people get tickets in advance. Because it was uh, so popular. Shakespeare and Company is selling tickets or you can get them online. Um, and it, it sold out last year. There was a line halfway oh, around yeah. the block, people trying that. to get in. Um, you get a piece of pie, homemade pie. You get a shot of Montgomery Distillery 
rye, okay. whiskey, and there's a baker's dozen of writers who have very short uh, readings, largely tied somehow to either pie or whiskey <laughs> or both. Enough, right? And uh, it, it was just wonderful last year. It, it was I've a lot of fun. I really loved that. Yeah. No, it, and there's a great listing of, of readers uh, here for that. We've also got a number of, of uh, um, great authors coming in, both local and regional authors. Um, one that I'm pleased to see coming back to Montana is a Helena native, uh, Mally Malloy, um, who's uh, well, well known as the Malloy family. Yes, that, yeah. The, the Decemberist guy, Colin. Colin is it, Colin is her, her brother. They're okay. both, you know, how that much talent can be in one family. It's just there goes those Malloys. Is you know, it's it's say. it's uh, it's absolutely amazing. But she's yeah. uh, in L.A. now, and she's got a uh, children's book series out. She's got a new novel out. Um, they're making a movie of one of her her books, and she's doing wow, a reading. Then right um, we've got uh, Annie Hillerman, Tony Hillerman's daughter, who's also an accomplished uh, novelist. She's going to be here. Um, We've got uh, James Lee Burke is, yeah, is doing a reading, he's and a great you know guy. he he he's a Missoula treasure. Yeah, um, yes. And uh, just a lot of local, great local talent, regional talent, and national talent coming in. It's it's and really it's not to be missed. It's all happening this week. It's all happening this week. Starts tomorrow night, and uh, goes through Sunday. Yeah, and. Um, if there's so much going on here, people at home, I know Scott has shown you, I can see the core of my eyes, shown you the website, but do go to the website, or John, where can people pick up the festival these, guide? These can be picked up uh, at Fact and Fiction, uh, Shakespeare and Company, um, boy, I'm not, uh, probably, uh, I, I imagine the Wilma has some, and, yeah. and uh, University and University Bookstore has some, yeah. um, and the, the website, as you mentioned, uh, yeah, they could save is, a tree, is, and he's yeah. been showing it to them. Yep, is MontanaBookFestival.org. Yeah, um, has a copy of this online. There's a there's a real handy uh, guide to look at online. There's um, so many events. There was a, a great piece in the Missoulian uh, last week, and in the Entertainer or in the uh, uh, Independent last week as well. Yep. So those were. Uh, they're Both really wonderful lasting out. programs too, and I we, think. And we've got a lot of publicity on uh, Facebook and social media, so yeah. you, you know you can, you can look for it uh, online in a number of different places. Okay. Um, there's a traditional, um, traditional printing, uh, letterpress printing uh, demo that's going to be taking place at, at the Missoula Art Museum. Oh, uh, well, that's a great a, idea. A, yeah, a local printer. Uh, Michael Seitz and uh, Aaron Parrott uh, from Helena are, are collaborating on that, and there's going to be a couple demonstrations there. So, people, you got to take in a piece of it. Like that's all there is to it. It's pretty amazing. Um, this week, all the way through um, Saturday, through Sunday, Sunday, through Sunday, we actually have have things going on on Sunday as well. So, and their um, their website again is uh, MontanaBookFestival.org. John, thanks so much for Thank coming you. by. Yeah, you Appreciate know it. it. You know it. Um, we'll be right back. Um, we still have a number of guests. And next up is Lance. He's from Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. He's going to be talking about a party celebration coming up this Saturday in Milltown. So watch this PSA. All right. our turn. Go to ourturntohelp.org and donate what you can. Hope is on the way. Mommy, I'm hungry. You're almost there, baby. Do you want to play a game on Mommy's phone? No. I think you will when you see it. AT&T reminds you, it can wait.
Nature Nathan here, on my own in the Montana wild. I'm used to having my best mate Liam behind the camera, but he said he was rather tired of getting chased by bears. The show must go on. Set up quite nice, really. Stuff from a lovely fish dinner. And I've got my bear spray. Oh well, I should be fine for the evening. When adventuring in bear country, remember, hike in groups. Bring bear spray and know how to use it. Make noise and don't run. Be bear aware. At Missoula Aging Services, you'll always be greeted with a warm welcome. Whether you are caring for an aging loved one or you're an older adult yourself, our friendly staff is ready to connect you to the help you need. You will always get unbiased advice, a free assessment of your needs, and personalized information about the resources available. See what we can do for you. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. What? Hey, we're back. I just saw something really disturbing on the screen. Well, Lance Olson is here. He's the AmeriCorps member for Milltown State Park. And um, welcome. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. You know it. So there's a celebration going on for National Public Lands Day, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Milltown Park is going to, State Park is going to take part in it. Yeah. Um, so National Public Lands Day is actually a nationwide celebration um, of all of our public lands. And I usually our montana state parks want to take advantage of that and we want to throw some sort of celebration either for volunteering or or um, presentations or something to, for people to get out in their public lands um, and celebrate it so um, we're doing that this saturday um, at 10 30 over at the milltown state park um, at the overlook is where it's all going to take place and that's this you know for people in missoula it's relatively new state park yeah. right created after the milltown dam was removed and all this mm -hmm. to doing yeah and the overlook is really cool yeah it's a beautiful view of the valley um it's kind of centered around the blackfoot and clark park confluence right there yeah um it's really the only developed part of the park right now but there's a lot in place for for more future development to to really attack bring people out there yeah and so saturday the 24th mm -hmm. and then um the bike from free cycles that's like a group is going to come from missoula so if yeah. you want to join a biking group you can yeah we've joined with a few different organizations in missoula and one of them is adventure cycling they're celebrating their 40th anniversary this year and they've created bike your park day which is also the same day so part of bike your park day is people can meet at free cycles and then they're going to take the Kim Williams Trail um, all the way out to the park um, just past East Missoula yeah. so, on Deer Creek Road. Nice. And then 1030 to noon, planting 200 ponderosa pine trees on the flood plain. Yep. Um, people will meet at the Overlook uh, at around 1030 and then we're going to hike down. Um, it's a, this is kind of our Montana State Park's contribution to National Public Lands Day is to plant 200 uh, ponderosa pines. That's We're going to hike cool. down to the floodplain, and um, we'll have you know, refreshments and snacks for people afterwards for the right, volunteers. Right. They can work hard, and yeah. then they get rewarded. Because <laughs> yeah. noon to three th is the community at Confluence program. Includes music, food vendor, kids' activities, and some speakers. Yep. Um, so that's kind of the the bigger portion of the day. We have combined with our friends group, Friends of Two Rivers, out of Milltown. They're and great. I've interviewed them in the past. Yeah, I like them. Yeah, and one of their big events in the year is Community at the Confluence, and so we're joining with them for the same day for those activities. Um, I'm going to be putting on some kids' activities. I, what are you going to do for them? I'm going to make like a bird feeder and activities around, around birds and nice. stuff. So, um, and then the speakers are from uh, kind of talking about um, the restoration project of the dam and kind of the history of the area. We're going to have a, um, a gentleman come out and talk about being bear aware. Um, Is that um, the, the bear aware guy? I can't think of his name. Yeah, I can't think of his I name know, right now I either. But mean. yeah, yeah, he, uh, that's great. yeah, he's going to have a booth set up. We're going to have a couple other booths um, from the Montana Natural History Center and the Bonner Milltown History Center. And um, we're going to have food there and then live music from a uh, kind of a friend of the friends group. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> they probably friends. do the best work. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then is the oh the fun run is really going to happen organized yeah. by Run Wild Missoula mm -hmm. and it's called Back of the Pack. Yeah, so Run Wild Missoula kind of has their own subgroup called yeah. Back of the Pack and it's just uh, just a, a casual fun run on the the trails um, that we have out there. 
Oh, that's so, great. Because, yeah. boy, you, you're doing this through the AmeriCorps program. And yep. I was telling you, MCAT has used AmeriCorps program in the past and um, really um, enjoyed working with two individuals just this past summer. Mm -hmm. But you've had a good time, it sounds like, it, being yeah. an AmeriCorps member attached. Mm -hmm. Are you attached to Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, or is it Milltown State Park? Milltown State Park in particular. Oh, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. So you've learned a lot about the park. Yeah. Yeah. And you're not, so you're in your ninth month mm -hmm. of your service time. Yeah, it's yeah. been an incredible experience and worthwhile through AmeriCorps to do this. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you knew how many people lost sleep over removing that dam, yeah. <laughs> there, was, there was such a huge anxiety, mm -hmm. you know, that those heavy metals would come through and mm -hmm. poison the Clark Fork and all kinds of to-doing. So it really is at, um, these are the salad days, I yeah. guess, of the post-dam thing. And a lot of people in the Bonner Milltown area have spent so many hours, you know, um, planning what what should be mm -hmm. built around this enormous change in their lives so yeah it's really cool that it's come yeah. down to like wow it's now casual and yeah. you can have a, a fun public lands day yeah. yeah and just to remind folks it's um it's coming up this coming saturday september 24th and it's na a part of national public lands day at milltown state park which is just um east of missoula and um those things we talked about are going on there. Um, should we send them anywhere if they need more information or something? Yeah, our state parks website, um, stateparks.mt.gov, um, will have a link to our events, um, and it'll give the address and full schedule of events, um, everything they'll need to know. Cool. Well, Lance, thanks so much for being on TV. Yeah, I'm waiting you. to be on TV. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we'll be right back because I, I have uh, more people for you to meet. Um, and Scott has another PSA while we change our guests. And we'll be right back on this edition of Missoula Live. Did you know parking over tall, dry grass can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. For too long, corporate tobacco has exploited our people manipulated our practices and profited from our addiction. No more. If you struggle with commercial tobacco addiction, call the American Indian Commercial Tobacco Quit Line today at 1-855-372-0037 and talk to someone who understands. Hello, folks. Do you remember? Look down, look down that long Lonesome Road, and that phrase, hang down your head and cry, I think applies especially to any person whose carelessness with a fire in the forest results in the destruction of vitally needed timber and valuable watershed lands. Certainly no road is more lonesome and desolate than a road through a burned over blackened and ugly forest. Look down, look down that lonesome road, hang down. Do you have the audio on? Oh, good. So Scott says he has the audio on. Um, we're back with Missoula Live, and um, we are talking with Angela about the uh, upcoming homecoming week. While well, you guys are looking at a little bit of the Missoula homecoming coverage of 2015, 
it's a it's a great parade. It's a wonderful community event. But wait, there's more. There <laughs> and, is. Angela Weisenberger <laughs> is here from the Alumni Association of the University of Montana to tell us more about it. Thank there, you, Angela, for thanks coming. Thanks for having me. Yeah, there you know is it. a whole week of events. So right. There's lots of stuff going on. Um, we start this weekend with the homecoming kickoff at Southgate Mall. It's at one o'clock. We have the Spirit Squad, the Drumline, Monty will be down there. Lots of fun excitement for about an hour in the afternoon. Kickoff homecoming. You can enter to win the ultimate tailgate package. Win football tickets in an RV tailgate spot. So everybody come out on Sunday and get excited about homecoming. That's great. And that's at what time at the mall? At one o'clock at the okay. mall in the clock court. Yeah. Everyone knows it's at the clock court. I mean, that's where Tuba Christmas takes place. Right. All the big events at the mall right. are in the clock court. Well, we start down at J.C. Penney with the mart, the oh, drum line, right. and go down the mall. It's it's a really fun, exciting. Oh yeah. Afternoon, so and then just a whole week of different events all over campus. We have a huge calendar of events on our website. You can go to grizzlum.com. And I'm really liking the design Under this the year. Under the big sky. Yeah. Yes. And having the constellations like Montana with Missoula as one, yes. and the, the grizzly claw as the other. It's really, it's kind of <laughs> it a cool concept. Fun, yeah. yeah, people don't realize that all of this stuff goes on for the homecoming week. And some of them sound really old fashioned and sweet. Like which one, like there's a singing um, yeah. thing that goes on. So we have a lot of traditional events. We brought back a few years ago the Hello Walk and we get students and campus community to come out and paint the sidewalk in front yeah. of Turner Hall. It's just a great way to come onto campus and see that. And then on Friday night at their pep rally, yes, we have si singing on the steps. We brought yeah. that back a couple years ago and it's really a great opportunity to have the um, UM choir come out and do some songs, do some of the traditional things. This year they have a new men, all men's choir, so oh, that yeah. should be really nice. Huh. And then we have the lighting at the M and the yeah. fireworks show. We get fireworks this year. So. Oh, you do? Yes. I guess it's going to be wet enough or yes, cool we, enough to. So we've, we've got approval from the fire, <laughs> fire marshal, so <laughs> we're good to go this year. And the lighting of the M, will that be using those luminary bag things you guys no, have? No, those we do around the oval. Yeah. Those are set up beforehand, but the lighting of the M is um, we have a bunch of volunteers that come up and climb up there in the dark with their flashlights and then they get the word to go and they light it up and yeah. it's, it's great to see. I think it'll be really neat with the, the our theme this year with Under the Big Sky. Yeah, that's true. Cool. And this idea of stars and constellations yes. is kind of cool. Well, we have a beautiful Montana sky, so. Yeah, we, we're in take a, advantage of that. Yep. We have a lot of, a lot of sponsors to thank this year. Um, we, we could not do it without the volunteers and the sponsorships that we get for this year. We have Access Physical Therapy, Black Owl Tattoo, Copperopolis, Farmer State Bank, the Greater Missoula Family YMCA, you guys. Yeah, we Cat, got to be sponsors. Yeah. Montana Acupuncture and Herbal Medicine, the Oxford Saloon, Oz Architects, Zip Beverage, Big Sky Breakout, Hunter Bay Coffee, Jeanette Rankin Peace Center in the Olive Branch, Missoula Food Bank, and Western Montana Clinic. And then we have several participating locations and what they're doing is they're offering um, either a discount or a get a gift with purchase thing on the homecoming parade day on Saturday. Oh, that's great. Similar like the book festival. John was talking about that where a lot of merchants are saying, oh, if you're part of this event, you can have 10% yep. off or, yep. or more. We're trying to encourage people because everybody's downtown on Saturday. It's a big community event and yeah. there's a lot of businesses that people don't necessarily go into on Saturday. So we're, we're encouraging them to visit. Um, the carousel will be giving buy one, get one free oh, rides. Oh good, that's worthy. Bitter at Flower Shop are gonna, is doing a deal on corsages so you can give them a call. Oh, that's sweet. Too. Um, the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium has a special getting in and Smooch Cosmetics boutique so lots of great opportunities all the information is on our website we have so right. much to do and Scott you've shown that to folks at home right because that sometimes can be longer when it's an institutional address you know is it long to get to this um, you have to go University you of go, Montana for nope, it's grizzlum.com and then right <sighs> on bad. the tile the homecoming tile is the main yeah. Oh, good. Thing on there, you can click on that, and all that information is there. So. Yeah, yeah. And now, typically, I mean, I could speak a little to our experience. You know, I think we'll be in our thirteenth, fourteenth year 
covering the homecoming mm -hmm. parade is a really fun experience. It's very diverse. This year I expect a lot of political type entries, but I don't know because it's a big election year. Yeah, I don't but, know. As yeah. of Friday we had, I think, 60 or 70 entries. We usually get over 100 and they tend to trickle in right at the, at the last, last minute. They, minute. they always do. Yeah. We have a deadline, but they always call. And can we still get in? Can we still get in? And we should let people know that they can get in then, yes. right? Um, they should honor the theme. I mean, there's guidelines for doing it. It's got to be safe. People shouldn't be throwing candy. I don't know. Right. But if you're a business or a cause or something and you haven't thought about it, it is really fun and it's really fun exposure. It's the exposure. biggest parade in Montana. So yeah, is it? Yeah. I believe it too. We love we love doing it every year. Yeah, and the parade is uh, 10 a.m. on the 1st of October? Correct, Saturday, October 1st. We better be ready, it's a week from this Saturday. <laughs> and uh, it, it will start uh, at the X's again? Or? It's the Parade actually starts at the corner of Higgins and Broadway, but okay. lineup is on Pine and Spruce. It and is all of still. The back Remember one year yeah. it was on Broadway somehow. Yeah. That wasn't. No, that we didn't went work back out. to the no. We <laughs> went back to the normal route. Right. So it'll it'll work good. We'll we'll see how the construction is going. Yeah, yeah that's true time, too. So the corners, uh, so people know the corners of the streets on Higgins are being reconfigured by Montana Department of Transportation in order to. Um, concur with ADA, uh, ADA standards. So that's right. why all this work is being done. So the corners may not be accessible during the parade time, or a couple of them will be construction yeah, sites. technically not the parade route itself. Those yeah. should be all fine. It's just the lineup. And just pay attention. There's a lot of volunteers and parade coordinators that are down there and, you know, try you, to be patient. There's right. a lot of entries. It yeah, it's a little chaotic at the beginning, and then once it gets it'll going, smooth it smooths out. And then out. people could be in what we call the hip strip, south of the Higgins Street mm -hmm. Bridge, and the parade will still will it go down to uh, uh, University and then yes. go up? Yep. Are it some breaks. of the floats yep. pairing off? It breaks off? Yeah. at two, those two streets, same as it usually yeah, does. Yeah. So. But uh, if you're on University, you can catch quite a bit of the parade yes. going up to uh, Main Hall. And then you guys will be streaming it live. Yeah, so we'll be streaming it live. Down, or and we have this new um, cellular bonding technology. <laughs> we can stream live from anywhere there's a decent uh, cell phone signal and oh. send the, that signal to Facebook and YouTube simultaneously oh, uh, nice. as well as our own website. So the other thing I was going to mention, um, we're doing a new thing this year. It's a homecoming scavenger hunt. Oh, yeah. So we have um, different campus landmarks, different spirit and event locations, sponsors. If you go and you take a picture or take a selfie at one of those locations and post it to um, our Facebook or Instagram accounts yeah. with Grizz under the big sky. We we're doing drawings for prizes all week. So oh, that's interesting. That's new, right? To activate yet. the social media. Yes. So to find it, what what is the Facebook so we're gonna, people should look we're gonna for? We're going to be posting pictures every day starting Sunday okay. of a one spot, and you have to figure out what that is. There'll be clues, and then go to that location and take a picture. And you get a little history wow. about what's going on at that spot. It's like you're getting a little Pokemon action a into bit, it. Yeah. <laughs> So people just go on Facebook and, and find like Grizz Alumni Association. Montana or, Alumni. Montana Alumni will get you there. Yeah. And they can learn more about it. That yeah. seems fun. Yeah. For the younger set, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and it's a wonderful time for alumni to come, you know, from near and far back to the campus. There are events for, do you guys have the dinner set up and all of that? So we have, on Friday is our big day and we have our Distinguished Alumni Awards Ceremony. Right. We're honoring four alums with the, the our highest honor at the University of Montana and those um, recipients this year are Daryl Choate, Timothy Conber, Arlen Fishbaugh, and Tom Seekins. So they'll be coming back to campus. Arlen, I know her from the Montana Arts Council yep. for so many years yep. and she's retiring I think this year. So they'll be back on campus. We'll be giving them their the Distinguished Alumni Award. Yeah. And then we have a reception that follows that. And then we go straight out to the pep rally out on the Oval with singing on the steps. Yeah, yeah. And then we go across the river over to the Holiday Inn. And that's where we have our annual all alumni social. Everybody's invited to come down for free food and music. And it's just a great you get the marching band in there at 9 o'clock on Friday night. <laughs> if you haven't yeah. heard the marching band in the atrium of the Holiday Inn, you are 
not experiencing homecoming. Right. So it's it's a very vibrant sound. But yes. isn't that nice of the Alumni Association? And we should mention people um, may be of more interest, you know, locally. If you're a member of the Alumni Association, you can use Mansfield Library with borrowing mm -hmm. privileges. And I think it's still $50, $35. Um, yeah, single annual membership is $50. Yeah. And all, all of our membership dues go towards uh, our a ability to do these events and programs that are in the community. Yeah. We have a lot of other events as well. If you go to our website, you can see that. But yeah. Homecoming is our biggest. It's the big focus. Yes. Brings all the eyes out. <laughs> and we have a lot of fun with it. So. Yeah, you do. And I, I mean, MCAT does too. I think everyone really enjoys that part of the Alumni Association contribution to quality of life in town. And it's a Missoula community event. It's not yeah, just Yeah, town and event. gown. Yes. And you really see it, you know, yes. in the parade and of course the excitement for the game. I shouldn't ask you because I don't know the answer to the question of who are they playing that day. They are playing the Southern Utah Thunderbirds. And the game kickoff time is a lot later this year. Oh, it's yeah. two thirty in the afternoon. Oh, okay. So even though the parade will still start at ten o'clock, there's gonna be a little bit bigger gap between yeah. the parade and the actual game. And now if people want to get tickets to the game, that's that's a big deal, right? That is they would have to go to um, Grizz Ticks to the to athletics yeah. and call them up and see I know there's a um, a a time and a certain amount that they release sh closer to the actual game. They kind of wait up until a right. certain point. So, okay. but give them a call. They can let you know what. Yeah, it's going on in that how many, department. Yeah. But it, it's nice that you could come on the show because all eyes are on the game. But it's nice to remind the viewers there's so many other things like distinguished alumni awards um, and those sentimental things to me, like the singing and the lighting of the M. Those are all part of the homecoming week, and it starts um, a this week Sunday. before this yeah. Sunday, a week before the big game, or six days before the big game. Yes. Well, Angela, thanks again for thanks coming. Thanks for having me. Another year, isn't it something? They I just know, this, is my, by. this is my fifth homecoming yeah. with the Alumni Association. Oh, my gosh. It's fun. Yeah, it is. All right. Well, Scott is going to show you another wonderful PSA. We're going to bring out our last guest. Mike Steinberg is here from Roxy Theater to talk about Montana Film Festival coming up in October. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Buckle up, Montana. Life is a ride you want to stay on. Send a buckle up reminder to a friend at plantolive.mt.gov. Sergeant Greg Amos with the Missoula Police Department. I'd like to talk a little bit about something I see downtown routinely, and that is pedestrians crossing against the pedestrian heads. So I'd just like to explain what is actually legal. You cannot begin crossing in the crosswalk when it's either flashing and in the countdown or solid red. The only time it's legal to begin crossing in that crosswalk is when the white crossing sign is displayed. The, what the countdown is for and the only thing that that's there for is to tell you how much time you have to finish crossing the street, presuming that you started when it was legal to do so. I'm Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. For the last 30 years, the Montana Hope Project has been granting wishes to Montana children who face life-threatening illnesses. I'm Montana Hope. To make a donation and help their wishes come true, please visit MontanaHope.org. We are Montana Hope! <laughs> Versus team. That's as good as it gets. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> so back with Mike Steinberg. He is um, the executive director of the Roxy Theater, and he's here to talk about the Montana Film Festival. Congratulations. That's great. It Thanks, Joel. Thanks. Yeah, we're excited. The second year. Um, great lineup. We're actually just. I was before this. I was proofing the lineup. You know, to make sure we have all the times and yeah, dates yeah. correct as we make that announcement. I think it's going to get announced today. What all the films are. 
Um, but I can share a lot of it yeah. with you right now. It's nothing Feel too secret. Feel free. And uh, Scott could show the website that has so I love the website design, by the way. Isn't that It was goofy? so cool. Yeah, like yeah you can just sit and play with it and make the, you know, right. like it's some kind of Jenga game yeah. or something. <laughs> it's really cool. We got it on the screen now. It's, it's a, October. Is that the, the 6th? 6th through the 9th, right. yeah. October 6th through the 9th. It's all the films play at the Roxy. Yeah. But there's events happening around. For example, um, right across the street on the 8th, which is a Saturday, the festival coincides with the Hip Strip block party this year. So oh, we're going to have a big that. block party at the Senior Center parking lot. Yeah. And we'll have, you know, booths. We'll have a mechanical bull, oh, um, wow. which I expect to see you on. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You have a limit of four hours to ride that thing. <laughs> but we've got, we've, we'll also show a movie that night in the parking lot, outdoor screening oh, of The Princess cool. Bride. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, nice family event. But it's all kind of centered right there on that block. And then yeah. we've got other parties and events around other hip strip spots. What was your inspiration? Like, the Roxy is, is showing, and people don't know, the Roxy is showing wonderful independent films and three screens. You've been at it for a good number of years. And... In addition, you also have responsibilities of the International Wildlife Film Festival. In addition, you also have the Montana Film Academy. In addition, so yeah. but I know you like have why a, did, right, but all I know that? you why have a history one? as a film program. Right? Sure. Well, I think you know the International Wildlife Film Festival will be 40 years yeah. uh, wow. this spring. So I'll be back to celebrate that yeah. with you. Um, and the programming that we do at the Roxy is very broad. It's everything from brand new releases to classic titles, and it's documentary, and it's fiction, and it's animation. And you know, our there's really there wasn't really a um, a sort of a, a film festival in the state that really you know focused on fiction and brought in films from other festivals right. and that was really our goal is to celebrate film as an art form and bring in the films that are playing at bigger festivals like you know like Sundance like the LA Film Fest yeah. Toronto and Telluride of course very interesting uh, programming there uh, the timing's not always that great because we can't necessarily announce our programming however we know that a couple of the films that were playing this year were just at Toronto last week uh, for example, Certain Women, which was shot down in Livingston. Yeah, I've read a lot about that. But really, just to, to tie that up, the, the goal was to bring in a fiction festival to our town. Because, yeah. you know, there's the Big Side Documentary Film Festival is fantastic. A lot of whatever they do, 100 or 200 Amazing documentaries about, sure. a year. Um, that's awesome. And, and most of IWFF is nonfiction as well, just the nature of a wildlife film. It's pretty uncommon that we would play a fiction film there. Yeah. But we wanted the opportunity to screen films that might not otherwise play, which a number of the films in our lineup are truly independent films that wouldn't even get a week run necessarily yeah. at the Roxy because they're independent or have such a small distributor or, or really the audience is that small 200 people them, who right. come in that weekend. You know? yeah. So we wanted to be able to do that, and we wanted to be able to uh, create an event that celebrates what we're doing year-round at the theater in, a, in kind of a very special way. And maybe bring new people in that may not be aware of all the work you guys have been doing there. So they say, wow, the film festival is a little higher profile than showing movies Yeah, regularly. precisely. So, we, so for example, Certain Women, which we know will be a very big draw, was shot in Livingston and yeah. stars our very own Lily Gladstone. Yeah, that means she, she was at the Roxy, right? She worked there for over yeah. a year, yeah. And she was at the theater when she got the part. Oh, wow. She was on the phone <laughs> and she flipped out. Of course, we all yeah. flipped out with her. So she's a very good friend and we're really delighted to be able to screen it and um, present it to the community. You know, and that's the kind of thing that's pretty obvious. Of course, that's going to bring in folks. I mean, we yeah. want to see Montana on film and we want to see Lily's performance. Yeah. And rightfully so. But, you know, that'll come back in November. We already have a date set for the regular run of it. It's a lot of other films, like there's a film called The Alchemist Cookbook that we're doing, which is being released by Oscilloscope, small kind of boutique distributor. Right. Um, we're bringing the actor, Ty Hickman is coming in for that, Hickson, sorry. Um, and um, we're bringing in Charles Burnett, who directed Killer of Sheep in the 70s and To Sleep With Anger in the 90s. And he's one of the most extraordinary well, filmmakers. The director. Yeah, I, he's coming. I saw the yeah. lineup and I said, wow, gee, I wonder why they're showing To Sleep With Anger. I mean, it was a great film. Yeah, yeah. But I had, you know, I remember screening at the Crystal in the early 90s or something yeah, like exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. Well, he's so unsung. I mean, yeah. I mean, in a way, he's unsung, in, except that, of course, his, his film, Kill of Sheep, is on the Library of Congress's 
list of films See, to that reserve one at I all costs. I don't cost. know. I know it's to sleep amazing. with anger. It's amazing. It's a film that was in 1977 presenting African American life in the most sort of uh, down to earth way, um, as opposed to a lot of what you saw typically in cinema in the in the 70s, which were you know uh, African American characters as uh, you know criminals or hustlers or whatever, and hus uh, uh, Burnett's film is so sensitive and sweet, and it's just this great little story. Mm. Um, and in that sense, he really does embody exactly what we're trying to present in terms of film as art and these great kind of visionaries behind the films that get made. So you are bringing people in oh, like tons. Charles Burnett. Charles Burnett, Emily Hubley, who's an animator. She's the daughter of John and Faith Hubley, who began animating together in the 50s. John even earlier than that, but made these wonderful little independent films. You may know Emily's work. Um, she's been involved in some documentaries, and she did the, she did the animation in Hedwig and the Angry Inch. You oh, know, okay. that beautiful <laughs> line drawn stuff. Yeah, that was her. So that so she's coming in. Also, Ken Turan from the yeah, LA Times. Yeah, I saw that. That's great. Ken he was a, here before over the Chinatown thing, which I wish I. Uh, that was could have super gone fun. To. Yeah, that was. A, this will be Ken's third visit to the Roxy. He was yeah. here for Chinatown, and then, the year before, maybe it was two years before. He came with um, uh, Singing in the Rain. Yeah. So he's a huge fan of classic films, and he'll be doing the discussion um, with Charles for oh, uh, To great. Sleep with Anger. Yeah. But he's also a major fan of uh, certain women, so he's going to lead that discussion oh, as well. Oh, that's cool. And um, a critics panel that will feature um, Mark Mohan, who writes for The Oregonian. Yeah and Portland and uh, our very own Erica Fredrickson. They'll discuss oh, the, what, what film criticism is in yeah. this day and age. So there's an element of the film festival that's not just like here's this, the film on the screen and off you go, but it's people. Yeah. Bringing people together so the audience can do that Q&A um, with someone whose work they've just seen. Exactly, and a variety. I mean, we have other narrative filmmakers, Sophia Takal, whose new film is called Always Shine. It's kind of a Brian De Palma-esque huh. uh, thriller. Uh, she will be here, but also experimental filmmakers, a woman named Julia Oldham, whose animation and experimental films are really remarkable, as well as a, uh, a gentleman named Zlatko Kosik, who's amazing, um, really, really, truly kind of uh, video art. Uh, that I know you'll appreciate. Oh yeah, I like video. So art. he'll be here to talk about it. Um, uh, you know, we've we've got um, other guests uh, with short films and with features. I mentioned some of the actors that are coming. Um, there's a film called Astray about um, a, a Muslim in immigrant in um, Minnesota. Musa Saeed is the director of that film. He'll mm -hmm. be here to discuss that as well. Wow. I mean, it's just it is that kind of experience where it's yeah. it's it's films that you might not other not white not might not otherwise, otherwise see. see. Yeah, that That's, one. That's so easy to say. Yeah. Uh, along with people that you may not meet, certainly not in Missoula, Montana. Yeah, and you'd be able to. Oh, he says two minutes. You'd be able to look at their work and then say, oh, I have this question or this struck me that way. Yeah, and in each case with uh, Emily Hubley, with um, Zlatko and Julia, also with uh, Charles Burnett. We're partnering up with the University of Montana, and these filmmakers will all be involved with the media arts program oh, and good. Talking, talking with students. The, I want to make sure that people know it's October the 6th through the 9th. 6th through the 9th. And it has its own montanafilmfestival.org website. That's right. You and can then, find info at theroxytheater.org, yeah. but also if you just go to montanafilmfestival.org, everything you need to know is right there. Passes are available. Yeah, you name you, it. like 150 gets you everything or something. Everything. 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 Go to the parties, have some tamales. Right. You know, and then it goes saying. down from there. To it goes down have to 150. If you don't have that, maybe just a ticket. Right? Yeah, ten bucks. It's not bad at all. Yeah. Mike, thank you so much for taking the time. Joel, thank you. It's you always great. That. Always a pleasure. Thank you, gentle viewer, for <laughs> sticking with us for this edition of Missoula Live in uh, mid-September. I'll just remind you guys. Um, the Do It In 72 contest, it comes up. And um, it is going to be at the Roxy Theater. At the Montana Film Fest. During the Montana Film Fest, this, the screening will be. But to get to the screening, you have to make the movie. And that would start September 30th, Friday at 5. Come to MCAT at 500 North Higgins. Get your three elements that have to be in your movie. And then have 72 hours to um, win either the 500, 300, or 100 cash dollars. So thanks again for watching this edition of Missoula Live. If you know of a group and you want to see them on the show, give me a call at MCAT. The number is 542-6228. For MCAT, I'm Joel Baird. Thanks for watching.